Usually yeah. maximum uh, yung Every recording record. mo. Huh? 20 minutes. Yan? Oo. So, yung card din yun, yun, 2 hours yun. Pero problema, pag upload mo, yan ang matagal. Ah, yes, yes. Yes, of course, we're supposed to.
Thank you. 
Commander, 2011. Hercules Hernández Valdez, Master 2013. <laughs> Mario Aquino David, Master 2015. <laughs> Carlos Chavez, Master 2015. Miguel <laughs> Vargas, Master 2017. Please remain standing for the flag presentation and pledge of allegiance. People Frank Louis, Grand Masters of Free and Accepted Nations of the State of California. We will now have the opening prayer. Great architect of the universe, in thy name we have a symbol, and in thy name we desire to go forth as nations, 
friends, brothers, and sisters, to endure and perfect the glorious work thou hast given us. Let us first give thanks for the bounty we are about to receive, as well as the skillful and caring hands that have prepared. We ask of you for your clear and loving guidance to direct us through this day and enhance us with the dedication and fortitude to accomplish all things. We ask that you bring peace and comfort to the hearts and minds of those who may be suffering, especially to our brothers and sisters who are recovering from the terrible tragedy of the recent Buffalo, in, in the recent Buffalo, New York, as well as that which is unfolding in the Ukraine. Lastly, we ask that you embrace and protect our soldiers and diplomats with ever so dispersed around the globe as they labor to protect our freedoms and democracy and in due time, bring them safely home to their families and loved ones. So while this I say in thy name, amen. So Somebody. Somebody. Master, Grand Master of Free and Accepted Missions of the State of California. Good evening. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Worshipful Michael Williamson, Inspector of 151st Masonic District, all the Grand Lodge officers and committee members. Members, veteran ladies, and all guests in welcome to our celebration. Worshipful Michael Wilson. <laughs> this special occasion has been delayed because of the pandemic. We give thanks to our great Creator for allowing us to pass through the great challenges of this century. We have waited. Nothing now remains to stop us from celebrating this memorable event. It is a grand occasion because we are celebrating the history laid down by our forefathers. We will not be able to do this without the contributions and assistance of all the officers, members, and ladies of the lands. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. We are also fortunate that many of our past masters who serve our lands and other lodges are here with us. Their leaders has made this lodge remain strong. Happy anniversary. I now turn the podium to our inspector, Worshipful Michael Wilson. There's a microphone up here, there are no secrets from me. <laughs> whispering to one another, there's no whispering. There are no sonic secrets, so you can know this. <clears throat> well, welcome. Thank you all for being here today, and thank you, Worshipful Master, for allowing me to have the privilege of addressing this fine body. It wouldn't be a Masonic event without an introduction. And I'd like to begin there, if I may. <coughs> So let me begin with introducing a community leader who is here today with us, Pamela DiGiovanni, the council member of Daly City. Thank you. As you have seen, the past pastors group is rather large, and so I'm not going to introduce them individually. But I do want to make sure that everybody understands 
the, the foundation of a lodge needs continuous maintenance, and that the past masters are a part of the backbone of the lodge. They, they bring the history, and they bring the support that's necessary to an officer for that requires that kind of support to be successful and built for the future. And so, if I may have all the past masters rise for group recognition, please. All past masters, please rise. Thank you for your, for your hard work, for your service. We do have the past master from two other lives with us as well. Worshipful James Bonin of Francis Drake, number 376. <laughs> and Worshipful Nienar Nicholas, Francis Drake Lodge, number 376. Thank you. Past masters are certainly part of the backbone and the part of the foundation of the lodge. But many of you that are here today hopefully have attended and had the pleasure to see the Hiram Award be given to brothers that are hardworking, do so much behind the scenes, make such a contribution to the individual lodges and to the crowd. And today, again, we have quite a number of Hiram Award recipients. And I would like to ask you all to rise for group recognition. Please rise. Absolutely. <laughs> just, just a moment, brethren. Just a moment. Can I ask the Iron Award winners to stand again for just a moment, please? Something is not quite right. There's something missing. And every Hiram Award winner in this room knows of that which I speak, particularly those that are members of this lodge. Something is indeed missing. I have the privilege of helping to correct what is missing. It is my honor on behalf of the lodge to make sure that one worthy brother who received the Hiram has the pleasure of wearing his medallion yet again. It has gone missing, but that which is lost is now found. Worshipful Jack. <laughs> I got you, Worshipful Jack. <laughs> he lost it. He lost it. Yeah. I told him I, I forgot it. <laughs> That's nice.
past master of Prior Lodge number 212, the inspector of the 337th Masonic District, the worshipful Hercules Valdez. The German poet 
John Wolfgang Goethe said, that which, has, that's which you have inherited from your forefathers, achieve it in human success. My presentation tonight is an initial attempt to construct the history of Carlos Truman II and to streamline the great contribution of Indian Americans in masonry. We have so much documents in our archive that we haven't had. They are all lying up in the attic. These documents tell us about all the endeavors and success. My goal to start constructing the history is to possess them that we can achieve what we have inherited. Many times I have heard the saying, history repeats itself. And history is a subject boring. Most historians that I've met, and most of my professors in history, don't agree with this. Because they said that each history has its own success, has its distinct features. I am borrowing one of the, my professors to speak in history as a closed line. It is a rope of wire which clothes are hand to dry. After that, the clothes are dry up, then they are put in the closet. The Tyler's registers and proceedings and all the minutes and Tyler's registers and attic are like clothes that are being dried up. But it's time to pull them up and use again. From the time of the institution of Grand Lodge in 1850, lodges have been sprouting up and booming in California. California one has always been one of the highest number of membership. In 1870, there were 429 members. There were active California lodges of about 172. The smallest lodge was Jefferson Lodge, 107 in the road Colony County, with 22 members. There were 15 active lodges in San Francisco County on the time. During the AMCOM or AMCOM communication, the Committee of American and Confidential reported that there were 10 lodges under dispensation. One of them was South San Francisco. George Keith was the sole registered delegate at the time. To that day, California one maintained the highest number of delegates. There were 150 active lodges for the whole of California. Stepping back, a year before, a flag that is hanged on the northwest of our lodge indicates or states that they had a first meeting in uh, November 19, 1970. Unfortunately, there is no minutes of the meeting that I could find. And the first pilot register that I found was that the first meeting was done in December 1st, 1870. The first master was Henry Fairfax William from California 1. Senior one at the time was George Skip who became a master in 1872 and 1875. Francis Brooke White from Rye Lodge in Puerto Rico became a master in 1873. Cornelius Dunshee, who was from Rye Lodge, became a master in 1889 and 1890. And all the other officers followed. Charter was issued in 1871 based on the first meeting of South San Francisco Lodge, number 202 was in October 25, 1871. There were 10 officers present. Tyler, Tim Deacon, being 
no one could pass them. There were three members present at the time. The greatest slaves to board were not allowed us was present about 20 visitors from different houses. More than the members of the land were present at the time during the first meeting. And the great history of San Francisco Lodge began. So you see all those faces on the wall. They have built structure of San Francisco, number 212. In 1915, 45 years later, in the midst of World War, which happened in 1914 to 1918, Masonic activities in the South, and an obligation was held, Masonry has some success and losses. But San Francisco County at the time had already 26 lodges in San Francisco County alone. That's the way it grew. There were 55,341 masturbations. One of them, of the highest, always remained California one, which we have the origin. Interestingly, Manila Laws, number 342, which was charted in 1901, Cadiz Laws, number 350, which was started, charted in October 13, 1903, in Corridor Laws, number 36, which was started charter in October 1907, were on the list of extinct lodges. And they were seen in December 1912. It was a loss for the jurisdiction of California, but it was a success and a gain for the Grand Lodge of the Philippines, because these three lodges were transferred to the jurisdiction of the Philippines. And in 1915, they composed the five lodges in the Philippine Island. On the time also, during the communication in 1915, seven under dispensations, including Bethlehem and Crown Lodge, they submitted the application to be formed as the Lodge. One is Bethlehem Lodge, and second is Crown Lodge. The Prejudice meeting was established, for example, Bethlehem in San Francisco in a hotel. In Many of those who attended the meeting were coming from different lodges. There were Burlingame Lodge, Santa Cruz, Laurel, Yerba Buena, Paramount, Mount Murray, Oriental Lodge, Paramount Lodge, King Solomon, and Palo Alto Lodge were represented. There were other 14 jurisdictions that were present all the time. The lodge from Pennsylvania, the lodge from Denver, Colorado, the lodge from Sterling, Kansas, and the lodge from Atlanta, Georgia. Coming from different jurisdictions and from different lodges, they were performing the Bethlehem Lodge. Crown Lodge at the same time, the same character that they have, like the Bethlehem. In October 1815, Having constituted, the first meeting was held. There were eight officers present. There were seven who signed the members' home for the registry. But there were so many others also coming from different lodges. In all these three lodges, we could see that there is constant support from other lodges. It could have been the home trend at the time. When a lodge is born, are the lodges found to celebrate from them? <coughs> South San Francisco at the time in 19, there were already 197 members. In 1960, there was consolidation 
of Bethlehem Lodge 453 and Crocker Lodge 454. 1916, you know, is the very first time. It was also a cold war between superpowers. The United States entered the Vietnam War. General Kennedy won the election. The sexual revolution of the 60s began with the use of birth control. But the Grand Lodge, in spite of all these things that were happening, continued to boom. There were 695 lodges already chartered in 1960, two times higher than in 1915. There were 538 master nations who celebrated their Golden Bethlehem Award. And in San Francisco alone, there were already 50 lodges chartered. But in spite of the many troubles in the world, men are forming lodges, finding ways to be together, looking for belongingness, looking for what could be done best in the world. Calling point one was the source of our first Masters didn't grow much. There were only more than 485 members. While Crocker Laws 454 took a big leap from 1915 to 1960, there were already 423 members. Bethlehem Laws remained on the common numbers. There were 234 members at the time. Crocker Lodge 454 and Bethlehem Lodge consolidated. Reasons for this I haven't seen in my research yet. But like many other lodges, lodges are born, grow up, some they die early, others remain strong and healthy. The turning point of history for our lodge happened in 1978. I don't remember the title of the song and it described Filipinos as the little brown man in the land of giants. Those little brown men in the land of giants started their leadership in South San Francisco Lodge 212. 1978, you will see that the Filipino leadership started. The first one was Worship Jin Liang, who became the first Filipino American to become a master of South Africa's law. His father, Rodian, was also a native member from the jurisdiction of the Philippines. According to Worship Jin Liang, it was his father way of life as a nation that encouraged him to become a nation. Worship of the Indianers sparked many others to follow. A sudden point of departure from purely vocational leadership of the laws to a more diverse community, which in the next 11 years, all masters were Filipinos. Worship of Jack Palmer will be sharing with us his journey. Was in the last from 1960 to the present, and he witnessed in the present during the hundred years anniversary of his loss. <laughs> and now we're celebrating the sequence and then 150 years. He is still here with us. <laughs> in 1989, another turning point of history that happened at the Crocker Lodge. From 1850 to 1989, there were already 833 extinct lodges in California. Extinct that means they're gone. Either they are consolidated, they die away, 
change name or transfer to other jurisdiction. There are about 540 lodges, one at the station, and six research lodges came up. They were about inspired of the problems that are happening in many lodges in California. About 151 and 51, 151,051 members of nations in the whole of California. Some of the lodges have an average of 300 to 500. Looking at that history that we have, the last class master of South Francisco Lodge and the first master of Primary Lodge 212 is Virtual Sassapata that we have here with us. Five officers from Bethlehem Laws remain in the line. After that, they all disappear, transferred to other lives. For 32 years after that consolidation, there is an unbroken and an unrepeated Filipino line of leadership. But like many other lodges, past masters are being recycled one after the other. But in our lodge, there is an unbroken line of succession from one master to another. There is a strong source of leadership in our lodge. And I hope that this will continue. And I can see a great future of this lodge. Many members are still coming. There is never a year when I become a mass nation that there is no applicants. Every year there is an applicant. And every time I see an applicant, I see a great hope that there will be a continued and unbroken and repeated masters of this lodge for another hundred years. On the report of the Grand Master of Grand, Grand Secretary Moses Worshipful Alan Castle during the Alamo Communication in 2022, or 2020, I would say, he indicated that since 1964, there has been a constant loss of membership in the jurisdiction of California. As of June 30th, 2020, there were only 44,586 nations compared to 151,051 in 1989. Such a big loss of numbers in nation. There is also 330 contracted lodges compared to 540 in 1989. Lodges are dying now. But I hope was to Castle's great confidence that solving the membership crisis in the late century is within our grasp. If we continue to show to the world outside the four corners of this lodge what we are, who we are, and that we continue to show that we are truly better man. The membership crisis will be solved. Like many of the buildings in California are crumbling down, majorly in many ways have been facing challenges to build its structure. Retrofit is the engineering system being utilized to strengthen the building structure today. Let us be part in possibly, possibly retrofitting the foundation of structures to make sure in California that many others that have come before us have done. As I have indicated in my introduction, my goal is to streamline the contribution of Filipino Americans in the land of the giants. Let me tell you a story as I close this presentation. 
During the first ecclesiastical missionary assignment in Africa, and as customary, I was introduced to church congregation. I had my African local translator on my left and my fellow missionary priest on my right. The local translator told the congregation that I was a white man, a Philippine from the land of Palestine. I realized that they never been a Philippine before. <laughs> In response, I told them this story. God created the heaven and the earth, and it was beautiful. God asked himself, who would benefit this creation? So he decided to make human being in his own image and likeness. He took a clay, molded it, put it in the oven. Instead of waiting, he wandered around in his excitement of watching the beauty of the world. All of a sudden he realized that he was baking something. He went back, he opened the oven. It was too late. It was burned. But he said, it was still my own image and likeness, so he breathed and gave life. Again, he tried. He took another clay, formed to a human being, put it in the oven and paid. Still, he wandered around, but went back soon for fear that it would be burned again. Opened the oven, took it, and unfortunately, it was undercooked. This time, I said, I will take my time. Molded the clay, put it in the oven, this time he didn't wander around. He waited at a time with patience. At the proper time, he took over the clay. He said, it's beautiful, properly cooked. The burned creation was the origin of the black people. We are properly good. As we mark the beginning of the new challenge of the space mystery, let us remember who we are, that we are Filipinos. We are part of creation. And most importantly, we are nations. 48 years from now, that will be 2070, we will be celebrating the bicentennial anniversary of our lives, 200 years of existence. We hope to see you again. We <laughs> hope we... Jack will be here. <laughs> Somebody will stand up to recount the history that we will be making. Happy anniversary, Paul.
to Bob and Lodge number 212. It's been a wonderful experience in my lifetime to spend 71 years with this lodge. As I look around the room and I see all of these past masters, I'm so proud to be here this evening to see all you fellas. I've, I've worked very closely with each and every one of you ever since you were appointed to the line. It's been my privilege as Secretary of the Lodge to get acquainted with our members because the members are the Lodge itself. I've had the, the honor of serving the past Grand Master here this evening and also another inspector here this evening. When I think of serving the past Grand Master Marshal Frank Louis, past Grand Master, we've had some wonderful experiences. And I was recalling one in particular. Virgil Brother Frank Louis was our inspector for 10 years. When he first appointed me, that was in December 3rd of uh, 93. He instructed me, I don't want to see any of the officers without them first coming to you to be certified. Those were his specific instructions. And over the years, there was one exception. <laughs> this particular officer had gone to see Worship of Brother Frank, and Frank asked him right out and said, did you see Jack yet? He says, no. He says, you see him, then you come back. But that's the way we work together. It was a wonderful working relationship. I'll never, I'll always cherish those wonderful years. As I look back at the history of our lodge, it's wonderful too to relate to the fact that our lodge was uh, given the privilege of having the first candidate in California Freemasonry as our very first master. That man, Henry Fairfax Williams, is a past master of California Lodge, number one. And he did not serve as master of the lodge under our charter. He only served during the time that we had requested a special dispensation, and then that was the end of it. So our first meeting, I need to relate to this in particular. The first meeting of the 13 members that established this lodge was November 19th. 1870. And would you believe that I shared that date that my birthday was November 19th, 1925? <laughs> and I always related to that. <laughs> but over the years, you know, I need to tell you this before I go further. Here's the speech I prepared. Would you like to hear his speech? Sure. Say no. No. <laughs> I don't believe in speeches, long speeches in particular, because the statistics go in one ear and out the other. And you soon get tired of hearing the, the monotony of the speaker going on and on and on. But in all sincerity, I'm, I'm going to. Disregard the speech that I prepared. <laughs> <laughs> For your sake, most of my own. But the, the wonderful thing 
and being a part of South Francisco Lodge in particular. Of course, we lost the history of our lodge when we consolidated in 1989, July 1st, with Palmer Lodge. Because at that time, we surrendered the name of South Francisco Lodge and adopted Poplar. So we were one of only five lodges in San Francisco that had never consolidated prior to that time. I now reside at the Masonic home in Union City. I'm a very proud member of this lodge and I've always cherished the wonderful memories that I've had with each and every one of you brethren who are here this evening. One of the things that I always strove for was when you see a member come in that door, you shake hands with him right away. You make him feel welcome. And I've done this with every single member of our lodge that where I was present. I always asked them, don't, don't wait for somebody to come and say hello to you. You go around and make yourself known. Now shake, shake hands with your brethren. This right hand of fellowship. We've got so many wonderful friends in Masonry. And the night that I received my first degree in 1950, it changed my life completely. And I have adopted Masonry as a way of life. So with all of that, ladies and gentlemen, brethren, and so forth. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with each and every one of you tonight and share in the festivity of celebrating the 150th anniversary of our lodge. I wish to express my appreciation to all of the past masters and the officers of this lodge for carrying on the traditions that we've established in our lodge. Congratulations, brethren. And I, I hope, I sincerely hope, that we will continue all of our traditions to the point that we will be celebrating another 150th anniversary soon. Thank you all. Yeah. <laughs> 
Secretary. <laughs> and now, and now, thank you very much for your service. Also. Thank you. And first of all, our inspector. Thank you very much for being my big brother. Relax. For all the advice. Pandemic master. Pandemic master. The, the master of the lodge in 2020 who had suffered through, well, you know, uh, by Zoom. Uh, if you would stand up, it was your year, 2020. Please approach the east. Thank you. Pretty. Pretty. 
If I could also, I think, I think it's appropriate to have our most, shall I say, seasoned past master also join this group, if, if I might have Jack brought back up. Please. He likes going for the ride, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then, if I could ask Worshipful Samara, if you would join me, and Most Worshipful, if you would join me in presenting the certificate to the brethren. representing Grand Lodge today in this moment that it is a great pleasure and honor to present this lodge with a certificate of 150 years of Masonic service to the brethren, to the community, to the individuals who have made the world a better place. Congratulations, brethren. Jack, get Jack, get Jack in. to Proper Lodge number 212 for your celebration of your 150th anniversary. Two weeks ago, we just arrived from Manila to attend their annual communication. The most worshipful are uh, Wilkins and his family, myself and Lila, and our grand treasurer, the very worshipful uh, Charles Cross and his lady Sandra. We represented you to attend the annual communication of the Philippines. And uh, I was surprised when uh, our sister there said, I saw you on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> because really? we didn't know we, we were in the news. And that was when we were laying the, uh, the wreath to our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, who happens to be our brother. He is also a master mason. But I want to put this in context, my brothers. Do you know how many years we are celebrating our Philippine independence? Any guess? 90. 100. 120. 120. We are celebrating our 120th independence from being colonized. And Crocker Lodge is already celebrating 150th. So what did I tell you? You guys are already in tuxedo and shoes, and our forefathers in the Philippines are still fighting the colony 
with that machete and wearing the wooden shoes. So it's not that great. But who started that revolution? It was the Masons. Because that is what Masons are. We want to seek the truth. We want to be free. We want to be free of our religion. We want to be free of our belief. We want to be free of our ideas. And that's why our brother, Master Mason, started a revolution against the Spanish. On the history that was being shared by Worshipful Hercules, he mentioned two lodges. Uh, Manila, Manila, Mount Lebanon Lodge number one, and Cavite Lodge number two, who used to belong to us. And then when they were granted their own charter or their independence, now they belong to the Grand Lodge of the Philippines. As a matter of fact, Manila, Lebanon number one is celebrating their anniversary, I think, next year. Same as you guys, or same as Crocker Lodge. You know, uh, they were the host lodge for us. Both two lodges, the Beta Lodge number two, are composed of all uh, current and former military officers and Mount Lebanon number one. So, the secret of masonry, my brothers, is not a secret, it's friendship. When I, or when we went to the Philippines, we didn't know them, and yet we were received as a long lost brothers. So my brothers, I did also have the privilege after most worshipful Frank to be the inspector of this lodge. Yes, there were challenges. But 2021, we're still here. <laughs> we're still here. And why? Because of your motivation, because of your dedication, because of your passion which is what we are being taught in masonry. We want to be a better man. We want to be a better father, a better brother, a better friend, and to make the community that we live right now a better place to live for the future generation. So my brothers, continue the great job you are doing. And like I said, the secret of masonry is friendship. The secret of masonry is harmony. If I may share, we have three events today. And so Lila says, where we gotta go? And I says, Crocker Lodge. Feeling <laughs> <laughs> aside, the reason for that is I'm not coming here because there's a prime rib. <laughs> I'm not coming here because there's a roast beef. You know why I'm coming here? There's a big one. Because I want to see Walter. I want to see you, sir. I want to see Glenn. You know? I want to see Worship Chuck. I have an experience the first time I become an inspector here. Because I keep calling him Chuck. <laughs> so he corrected me. And then he intimidated me because he knows the ritual more than I do. <laughs> but, Worshipful, thank you for all the lessons you have shared to me. I appreciate it. And to you, my brothers, thank you very much. And again, congratulations. Continue the love. Continue the friendship. Thank you. Worshipful. <laughs> Time Worshipful Zimara speaks, it just inspires me to speak too. <laughs> so, it's your fault, Worshipful. Well, when the date of this event was announced, I said, Oh man, it's our anniversary. It is our 33rd anniversary, and we are here in seven days in our Worshipful, how do I make up for this? I'm supposed to be, we're supposed to be having dinner somewhere. <laughs> Expensive one. Continue to be a good husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just make up for it by saying publicly, I love you, sweetheart. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Worshipful.
thanks so much. And I realize the introduction, I, I'm Michael Olson, the inspector of this district. I, I follow with Tony. My wife, Betty, is here, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So I'm the current inspector, former inspector, former inspector. Thank you. Would you like to say something about how we continue after you left? I won't be as long as Tony. <laughs> 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 I'd like to offer my congratulations to the lives. I remember back in what, 1997, we had the 125th anniversary. I was there. Actually, I was grandma's officer there. And we had a nice celebration at that time, and a nice one today. So continue to work. Keep it moving. We need you. Thank you. <laughs> That's number two and two. It was just uh, very unfortunate that uh, I wasn't able to uh, celebrate this uh, event, historical event during my term. But again, thank you to Washington uh, President Campbell. Despite his busy uh, schedules, he was able to uh, make this happen, this event for tonight. And again, during my term, I didn't get a chance to uh, express my uh, sincere gratitude for the brothers. And now, I'll take this uh, opportunity to thank all the past masters and the brothers, sisters of the proud class number 212. The waterfall, the uh, hundred uh, 51st uh, the Solid District uh, Inspector, Waterfall uh, Gerald Michael Wilson, thank you. And again, thank you uh, to those who uh, have stood up by my side every evening. Brother who called me worst to master, but most importantly, called me. Brother, man, thank, thank you. By the way, uh, he introduces your wife. I do not know him also introduces my wife. <laughs> 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 Thank you for your patience that uh, I'm always in and uh, most of the time I'm around, I am the last that I go to. Because he sat, sometimes he was asking me why you are late. It's already 12.30, we are still here, we are in the neighbor here, so we are still here in the last. <laughs> That's true though. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's excluding the uh, fellow sit down chair. Before I forget, uh, there's a presentation, uh, a gift that uh, given to me by the, uh, by the City of South San Francisco certificate of recognition, traffic last number 212, 150th anniversary. City Council of South San Council of South San Francisco, Mayor Mark Nogales, and Vice Mayor Buena Flor Nicolas. Thank you. Brother Chaplin. There's another one. Yeah, we've got the presentation. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> but everybody, I'm trying.
tripped on my knee today, but I'm still here. <laughs> this is momentous occasion. First, let me begin. I am here not just on my behalf. I'm also here for assembly member speaker, pro tem, Kevin Mullen, because all of you that have served in this community, every community you serve, you touched all of us, all of us. You touch me, not as an elected official, but as a friend. And you touch our communities. You touch the children in our community. You give so much of yourselves with integrity, with grace, with love, and your service is unmeasurable. So let me begin by first giving you and presenting our Worshipful Master currently. Worshipful Masters of the Past. The Harem Award winners, the beautiful wives of these gentlemen, and everyone present today, I want to say with a grateful heart on behalf of uh, Honorable Assembly Member Pro Tem Kevin Mullen, let me begin. He begins with a certificate of recognition from the State Assembly. Congratulations on your 150th anniversary of the establishment of this lodge, and best wishes for your continued success and service. And thank you for giving back to all. Signed this day, May 21st, by Kevin Mullen, 22nd District, Speaker of Pro Tem. I'll present this one first. And then, from my, our daily city, which I cannot, my heart is about to explode by sitting there and feeling all of this, all of this, looking at the pictures, look at the transition. And then how I transition into the beautiful Filipino community that I so love. For me, my Buhai, Bahamian spirit lives in this building and will continue to live not only for 150 more years, but eternal life. Even when you're up there with the angels, blessings be upon all of you. So this is a certificate of recognition to my beloved Parker Masonic Lodge 212 in Daly City. In recognition of your 150 year anniversary, the City Council and the City of Daly City congratulates all of you and wishes you blessings and love and continued success in your great service to our beloved community and to all that surround you and to all you have touched our hearts. So congratulations, I look forward to many more. And when you say you welcome everyone, you welcome everyone and I am very humbled and honored to be here. So thank you very much. <laughs> you won. Brother Chaplin, appreciate us in our benediction and also the. Uh, our worship, sir. Before our benediction, I have also a little surprise for you. It is a simple token of our friendship too, and also being a seven, seven more months, but for sure you're gonna be a fast man. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for you, worship, sir. And also, there's a name tag for you for your luggages. <laughs> this is an acrylic that has been made wow. to all of us to commemorate of our anniversary, <laughs> of our 150th anniversary. But this one will be displayed to our archives. Thank you, worship. Thank you. Thank you. Now that we're about to separate and return to our respective places of abode, we ask for your continued blessings of strength and enlightenment as you guide and protect us against the deviations from God and the world. We ask that you continue to shower us with your love, mercy, and kindness, and empower us with your endurance and encouragement as we forever strive to live in peace and harmony, united as one. To all this I say, Amen. So I do. We're done. 
Please conclude our ceremony. Please join us. Join us all, our dinner and fellowship at the Jack Palmer Hall.